All right, good evening, everyone. Hello and uh, welcome to this year's Davenport Society Dinner. Uh, as our program begins, I invite you to begin eating your salads, please. Uh, my name is Chris Robert, and I'm serving as the interim dean for the True Last College of Business. Uh, I think I've met most of you during my 20 plus years uh, with the college, but if we have not met, uh, let's do so tonight before we leave. We are pleased to host this event in person again. The last time we were able to do so was 2019. Uh, in the last three years, we've missed many opportunities to gather with alumni and friends and to recognize and celebrate each other. Tonight, uh, we make up for some lost time by honoring 16 new Davenport Society members and 63 advancing members. Yeah, that's worth, that's worth some applause. And thank you for taking the time to join us this evening uh, during what promises to be a busy and exciting homecoming weekend. It is the prerogative of the Dean to say a few words while people wait with their stomachs growling uh, for dinner to be served. And given that I don't expect to be the interim Dean at this time next year, I'm gonna take advantage of that prerogative. Uh, tonight, we are here to celebrate we will honor those who have shown their commitment to the college in the form of financial support and learn more about them and what motivates them to give. That's really why we're here. These new Davenport Society members deserve our recognition and celebration. This evening, we will also celebrate the anniversary of Cornell Hall, which is as impressive today as it was when it opened in 2002. Over dinner, we will play a video that demonstrates the amazing growth we have experienced as a college in the last 20 years. In case you're too busy eating scallops and chatting with your neighbor to see it, I want to share a few highlights. Uh, first and foremost, we became a named college of business. Uh, that is so impressive. I feel like I probably could just end my comments right there and we would all be happy, but, uh, but I'll go on. Uh, among the programs created over the last 20 years uh, are the Cornell Leadership Program, the Heartland Scholars Academy, the Allen Access Program, the Trulask uh, True Edge uh, Program, which some of you know as the Professional Development Program, and Camp Trulask. These programs reflect the college's commitment to access to an outstanding business education, the student experience, and career preparedness. We want to make sure that every student who wants to pursue a degree at True Lask can do so, and that once they're here, we're giving them the best possible experience and preparing them for the future. We've also launched innovative new degree programs, including our executive MBA program, which is currently on pause as we reimagine it to uh, fit better market needs of today's executives, uh, executive MBA students. Uh, three new master's programs, uh, the Master's of Science in Finance, the Master of Accountancy, and the Master of Science in Business with stackable certificates. And while it's not a new program, it's a newly reimagined one, a fully online Crosby MBA program the demand for which has far outpaced our projections. These degree programs reflect the college's commitment to lifelong learning and to providing degrees that students and employers seek. The shift to online delivery for our master's programs in general goes back to my earlier comment about access. We are making it possible for people to experience Mizzou business programs from literally anywhere in the world. In the last 20 years, we have also enhanced our focus on experiential learning or learning by doing. Uh, for example, we've opened a Caldi's in Cornell Hall that allows students to see the inner workings of business in real time, an innovation space that brings the latest technology into our curriculum, and an inside sales lab that allows students to learn modern sales techniques while providing inside sales support to partner companies. Again, these demonstrate our focus on the student experience and career readiness. 
A student who has audited the Caldi's contract or proposed a marketing plan for a new drink launch is going to make an impression in any job interview. These are just a few of the many examples that we could share. And none of these initiatives would be possible without support from alumni and friends like you. You give your financial support and your time, but you also give your ideas, your expertise, and your experience, and your sincere faith in both our mission and our vision. The impact of that cannot be underestimated. These initiatives wouldn't be possible without the support of the Trulask and Cornell families. Putting your name on something is the truest vote of confidence, and we do not take our responsibility to this lightly. Part of tonight's program will honor Harry Cornell's legacy with the college as we mark the 20th anniversary of our building. We've got some special speakers here tonight uh, to help us do that. Thank you again for joining us this evening, and I would like to now introduce you to this year's Davenport Society Chair, John Zimmerman. John serves as president of Ascent Private Capital Management of U.S. Bank, and as you'll see in the program, he leads a national multifamily office uh, serving over 210 families with an average net worth of $250 million. His career has taken him to Centaire Trust Company, Janus Capital Group, Northern Lights Capital Group, and Denver Investments. He's one of our graduates. Uh, he holds an MBA from some other school with a mysterious mascot called a Billiken. Uh, and he serves our college as the chair of the True Last Dean's Advisory Board. We're grateful for his involvement with the college and proud of his accomplishments as one of our alumni. John, I'll turn it over to you. So I'll try to keep this to about 45 minutes. Um, so before I do get started with my fairly brief remarks, um, a big thank you to Interim Dean Roberts. This has been a, a goofy year with COVID and changing in deans. You've done, Chris, you've done a great job of leading the school, keeping everything, you're a steward, and we really appreciate that. So a round of applause, please. Thank you. So it is great to be here in person. It's great to see everybody in three dimensions as opposed to two on a screen. So as, as Chris mentioned, it's been three years since we've been together since 2019. So welcome everybody. It's, it's great that everybody's here and thank you. Thank you for showing up and supporting Davenport and uh, True Last College of Business. Uh, my name is John Zimmerman. I'm a 1985 graduate of the business school. So it's been a long time <laughs> since I graduated and it's awesome to be back a couple of times a year. Um, I'm very fortunate to be standing here representing both the, the True Last Dean's Advisory Board as well as the Davenport Society. So again, on behalf of both of those, welcome. The Davenport Society was founded in 1987 with the express purpose of, of representing an enduring commitment of our alumni and our friends of the True Last School of Business and really advancing the cause of our business school. We have 588 members and we have raised over $155 million to support scholarships and programs. So this is a very successful part of the university and, and our students that we support have, have benefited tremendously from, from what we do. Our investments in the Davenport Society, really an investment in our students, in our college, and in our university. But when you really distill it to its essence, an investment in our Davenport Society is an investment in our future. These students that represent, that we represent here, that are here tonight, they represent the future and we as Davenport Society members unlock their potential and allow them to go into the world, to have successful careers and positively change the world for the better. So I think this is a great opportunity to really invest in our future. And what I'd like to do is, at this point, recognize the students who are here, the student leaders at the tables. Would you all please stand up? So when we look at these young people, this is the future. And our support of them and our support of the True Last College of Business really is the key to a better future. And 
The Davenport Society is a special organization and we can all be proud that we've been a part of building it. So thank you all very much. Um, so again, with these students, please engage with them at the tables, uh, in, enjoy getting to know them, understand what their future is, and you know, that's the future of the school and our, our, our country. So we've got a great evening ahead, as, as Chris mentioned. Um, we're gonna recognize new and advancing members. We're gonna hear from college leaders about what's going on with the university, and we're gonna uh, honor Harry Cornell and his dedication to what we, we've done as a, as a university and as a college. So once again, thank you for being here. Um, we're glad you're here, and I'd like to introduce Abel Ambushi. Where's Abel? Uh, to introduce the first uh, new Davenport Society member. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Abel Amsey. I am a 150-hour accountancy student who will graduate in May of 2025. I am a member of both the VC Academy and the Cornell Leadership Program. I serve as a treasurer for the National Association of Black Accountants, and I am a team leader for the Baptist Student Union. And last summer, I had the opportunity to intern with EY uh, in Kansas City. And uh, would you please join me uh, in being able to introduce Joseph and Vera Brandt. So Mr. Joseph Brandt graduated from MU with a bachelor's degree in 1974 and an MBA in 1976, and he retired as vice president of sales administrations of North Tech Global HVAC in O'Fallon, Missouri. Ms. Vera Brandt received her accounting degree from MU in 1981 and has been a CPA since 1996. She retired as chief financial officer of Fortune Bank in Arnold, Missouri. The brands hope to provide financial support to individuals who need help in attending MU by contributing to scholarship funds, including the Vera Brandt CPA Scholarship in Accountancy. Please join me in thanking Joseph and Vera Brandt. Hi everyone, my name is Mercedes Moravec. I'm a Heartland Scholar pursuing a business degree with an emphasis in marketing. When I graduate next May, I will have completed certificates in both marketing analytics uh, and sales and customer development. I'm active in the True Last Student Council um, and most recently served as an intern for General Mills in Scottsdale, Arizona. It is my pleasure to introduce John Brazi. Mr. John Brazi is Chief Operating Officer of the J.M. Smucker Company in Oroville, Ohio. In this role, he has strategic oversight of the U.S. pet food and pet snacks, coffee and consumer foods businesses, as well as the company's away from home operations and supply chain functions. Throughout his 30-year career, Mr. Brazi has delivered significant brand and category growth through roles at the Procter & Gamble Company. He is a Mizzou grad receiving his business degree from our college, as well as an MBA from St. Louis University. Thank you, Mr. Brazi, for your generosity to the Heartland Scholars Program. Good evening, my name is Dylan Kay and I'm pursuing a business degree with an emphasis in finance and banking with a minor in economics. Outside of Trulask, I work for a nonprofit organization called Access Distributed, which works to help underprivileged communities get, achieve careers in high finance. Um, within Trulask, I'm active within the Allen Angel Capital Education Fund, the University of Missouri Investment Group, the Inner Fraternity Council, and Beta Theta Pi Fraternity. Next summer, I will serve as an investment banking summer analyst with JP Morgan in New York City. Please join, me, please join me in introducing Ben and Katie Carrier. Thank 
Ben and Katie Carrier met at Mizzou in the Cornell Leadership Program in 2009. As business students, they held leadership roles in various TrueLask organizations, including the Allen Angel Capital Education Fund, and say they have many fond memories of their time at the university. After graduation, both of them obtained their CPA licenses and worked in Kansas City and Zurich, Switzerland, before moving back to the Columbia area in 2021. They currently work at Girding, Corti, and Chitwood, a regional CPA firm that focuses on tax, audit, and accounting services. As the True Last College of Business and its programs have been so beneficial and consequential to their lives, Ben and Katie Carrier donate to reinvest so that other students can have similar opportunities. Thank you, Ben and Katie Carrier. Hello, I am Orlando Guerrero, and I am a Heartland Scholar from El Dorado Springs, Missouri. I am pursuing my business degree with an emphasis in marketing and a bachelor's degree in international studies with an emphasis in Spanish, graduating next December. I currently serve on the marketing teams for the Jefferson City Renegades baseball teams and the Murray Kennel Company. It is my pleasure to introduce Melissa and John Hensley. Melissa and John Hensley are both proud Mizzou grads who cherish their time in Columbia and are excited to start the chapter of giving back. When not attending black tie galas, you can see them dragging their four children to any and all Mizzou athletic events. M-I-Z. Good evening, everyone. My name is Haley Niehaus, and I'm from Algonquin, Illinois. I'm pursuing a business degree with an emphasis in finance and banking with certificates in risk management and insurance and investments. I'm currently a wealth management intern for Bonetta Wealth Management in St. Louis. And last summer, I served as a global finance and business management intern for J.P. Morgan Chase in Chicago. I'm active with the Trulask Leadership Conference in Alpha Kappa Psi, and I also volunteer with the True North of Columbia. It is my pleasure to introduce John and Larissa Jarvis. Jonathan Jarvis is a director of corporate strategy within AT&T Operations Finance Organization. In this role, he is responsible for financial reporting and strategic planning, investor relations support, and industry analysis. Prior to joining AT&T, he was a licensed financial advisor and retirement consultant with LPL Financial and J.P. Morgan. He is also an adjunct professor of finance at Mizzou. Larissa Jarvis has been in the consumer products goods industry for over 19 years. Her tenure with PepsiCo began in 2007 with roles across sales, marketing, and strategy. She currently leads the $1 billion Frito-Lay business with Albertson Sons Companies. Ms. Jarvis holds degrees from North Carolina State University and completed the Ascent Mastering Management Program in association with Dartmouth College's Tuck School of Business. John and Larissa Jarvis's gifts provide financial support to minority business students who display outstanding academic merit and leadership. Welcome to the Davenport Society, John and Larissa Jarvis. Good evening. My name is Kate Rudiger, and I am a 150-hour accountancy student who will graduate in May. I am a Heartland Scholar from New Haven, Missouri, and am an active with Beta Alpha Psi. Most recently, I interned with Deloitte in St. Louis and with Williams Keepers in Columbia. In 2022, I was the college's recipient of the Undergraduate Student Leadership Award named for alumnus and TrueLast True Dean's Advisory Board member, Edward J. Rapp. Tonight, it is my pleasure to introduce Derek and Molly Murray. Thank you. 
Derek and Molly Murray have supported various TrueLask programs, including the TrueLask Excellence Fund and the School of Accountancy's Data Analytics Program. Their gifts recognize the impact the college has had on their lives and career successes, with the goal of continuing this legacy for generations of students to come. The Murrays have served as members and officers of the college's recent alumni advisory board, of which Molly is currently president. Please join me in thanking Derek and Molly Murray for their support. Good evening. My name is Dylan Stovall, and I am pursuing a business degree with an emphasis in finance and economics. At TrueLask, I'm active with the University of Missouri Investment Group, Allen Angel Capital Education Fund, and the Mizzou Real Estate Club, as well as Delta Tau Delta Fraternity. Most recently, I interned for McCarthy Capital in Omaha, Nebraska, and next summer I will be joining Lincoln International as an investment banking summer analyst in Chicago. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Price Sloan. After a long career in law and in banking, Price Sloan recently announced his retirement from Wells Fargo. Price was the Executive Vice President and Chief Strategic Enterprise Risk Officer, as well as a member of their management committee. Prior to joining Wells Fargo, Price held several senior positions at TD Bank Group, including CEO of TD Bank's U.S. Holding Company. Price was also the COO of Investment Banking at Bank of America, a partner in the law firm known as Hush Blackwell in Kansas City and served as general counsel and corporate secretary of J.C. Nichols Company. Mr. Sloan, on behalf of everyone here, we thank you for your support of the college. Hello, I am Gunnar Noble, and I am a 150-hour accountancy student graduating next May with a certificate in data science and analytics. I currently serve as the president of the University of Missouri Investment Group, and most recently interned with Will Square Capital in St. Louis and Deloitte in Chicago. It is my pleasure to introduce Thomas and Karen Weaver. Thomas H. Weaver completed a career in the investment management field in 2017, beginning as a bank trust officer managing investment portfolios for the First National Bank of Kansas City, and concluding his career as senior portfolio strategist and risk manager for the hedge fund Eagle Trading Systems. He spent 44 years actively engaged in investment analysis, portfolio management, and strategic applications of investment theory and risk analytics. This career took him across the country, returning to Columbia in 2011. Living in Columbia with his wife, Karen, and their family, the Weavers have embraced, have embraced Mizzou as alumni, fans, and now grandparents of a Mizzou student. They are active supporters of both the College of Education and Human Development and the True Last College of Business. Karen serves on the Advancement Committee for Education, while Tom serves as the incoming president of the Finance Advisory Board for True Last and as an advisory board member to the University of Missouri Systems Investment Office. We appreciate your contributions, Mr. and Mrs. Weaver. Welcome to the Davenport Society. Hello, everybody. My name is Beth Crum, and I am the Executive Director for Advancement at the True Last College of Business. <clears throat> I'd like to take a moment to, again, say thank you to all of our new members for their support of the college. Your generosity has created an immediate impact for our college, and will do so for years to come. The Davenport Society is a symbol of the enduring commitment of its members to the welfare of the college and to its long-term excellence as a leader in business education. 
Davenport members ensure the college's continued prominence while also guaranteeing that we remain accessible to prospective students as well as providing an outstanding experience for our current students. Tonight, in addition to inducting our new members, we want to take a moment to recognize the existing members who have increased their level of giving and continue their commitment to Mizzou. Advancing membership in the Davenport Society is a vote of confidence in what we do at Trulask, that we are doing the right things at the right time in the right way. These donors' ongoing support of the college enables us to pursue new opportunities that otherwise might not be possible. We have three of our advancing members in attendance with us this evening. Would you please stand as I call your name and remain standing? Chuck Hutchins and Nancy Hutchins. Michael Weiss. Thank you, Chuck, Nancy, and Mike. During our centennial celebration in 2014, we launched a new initiative called the 1914 Society, which recognizes those donors who choose to support the college through planned gifts. Whether it's funding a new program, endowing a scholarship, or naming a faculty position, legacy gifts are a wonderful way to make those opportunities possible. These commitments will ensure that the next 100 years of business are about sustained growth and achievement. Would our 1914 Society members in attendance please stand and be recognized? Thank you again to all of our new and advancing members. Uh, we're going to pause the program now. Please enjoy dinner. We'll be back shortly. All right. I hope everybody's been enjoying their dinner. And, and please continue eating uh, as our program continues here tonight. Uh, as we finish our meal, I'd like to thank tonight's staff here at the Atrium on 10th. Let's give them a round of applause, please. As I mentioned earlier, tonight we celebrate the induction of our newest and advancing Davenport Society members, and we are also celebrating the 20th anniversary of Cornell Hall. I hope you had an opportunity to see the slideshow we played over dinner. Uh, this highlighted some of the amazing programs and initiatives that we have undertaken in the last 20 years. You may have noticed that one of the slides noted something that Dean Bruce Walker said during the ribbon cutting from the building uh, in, in 2002. He said, Cornell Hall will help the college achieve two priorities, expanding and strengthening its Master's in Business Administration program and increasing the use of information, technology, and instruction. Our building has done that and so much more. As you know, the east side of the building has Cornell Hall etched in stone near the stairs. This serves as a daily reminder of the man for whom the building is named, Harry M. Cornell, Jr. Harry passed away in May after a long and amazing life. The company he raised into a Fortune 500 giant, Leggett and Platt, says that he leaves a legacy of honesty and commitment that defines the company culture to this day. We have some special speakers here tonight, uh, Dean Emeritus Bruce Walker, uh, Cornell Leadership Program alumna Lindsay Mullinger, and CLP Director Mary Beth Mars to talk about Cornell and the impact at Mizzou. So I'd like to ask Bruce to join me on stage. Uh, Bruce was the dean of the business school for 20 years, and you won't find a bigger champion for our college than him. His tenure as dean included the construction and naming of Cornell Hall, as well as the naming of the college, uh, meaning that the most transformational activities for our college in recent memory happened under his leadership. Uh, Bruce asked me to tell you that he's going to comment on Elon Musk Winston Churchill, Alice Walton, and Harry Cornell. And I'm not sure how he's going to tie them together, but I'm sure this will be good. Bruce. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. 
Chris, uh, thank you very much. In my opinion, as John Zimmerman mentioned, Chris has been an excellent interim dean, a steady hand while moving the college forward as he can and should. So Chris, kudos and thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. My role, it's really an honor, it's a joy, is to talk about Harry Cornell as a great leader in business, in his community, and fortunately for us, on behalf of our business school. It's especially meaningful for me to do so when I have in front of me his daughter, Sharon, and her husband, Lance Bishore. Uh, thank you for being here, Sharon and Lance. It's really difficult to condense a 32-year relationship that grew into a deep friendship down to 60 minutes, as I've been asked to do, but I'm going to try to do that, okay? Well, the slideshow gave you glimpses of Harry Cornell. For those of you who may not know Harry's background, let me provide just some brief bio notes. Harry graduated from MU's business school in 1950. He then went to work in sales for Leggett and Platt, the company co-founded by his grandfather in Carthage, Missouri. He took on increasingly important roles at Leggett and Platt, eventually serving as the company's CEO for only four decades. Harry led, as Chris said, Harry led Leggett and Platt to become the world's largest furniture and bedding components manufacturer and supplier, and a Fortune 500 company. He concluded his tenure at Lagan and Platt as Chairman Emeritus, retiring in 2008. And this is a picture of the college's advisory board, then called the Strategic Development Board, back in 2001, yes, yeah, spring. Mr. Cornell, as you can see, I don't know how he wound up front and center down there, so as it should be. I also noticed that they stuck me way back there, so everything's appropriate, right? So, well, tonight we salute Harry Cornell, the leader. Recently, I've been thinking a lot about leaders. Truly, people here this evening, including current and future leaders, and also, Chris, unless you've changed your mind and you're interested in the quote-unquote permanent position. Yes? Oh, okay. <laughs> also looking ahead with optimism to the appointment of a so-called permanent leader for the True Last College of Business. So as the title of my talk suggests, I've been thinking about other disparate leaders as well. As odd as it may seem, which Chris reinforced, I'm going to pay tribute to Harry in relation to Elon Musk, Winston Churchill, and Alice Walton. Okay, bear with me. So let's begin with Elon Musk, who is in the news more than anyone. Well, not more than past or current government leaders, not more than the Kardashians, and certainly not more than Kanye West. But, you know, most everybody, he's in the news more than that. So why did I choose Musk? Well, last week I had the pleasure of moderating a case study discussion for the freshmen in the Cornell Leadership Program about Tesla and its leader. Okay. Of course, there are far more dissimilarities between Musk and Harry, such as temperament and the way to treat colleagues and employees. But we'll move past that. Are there any similarities between Musk and Harry? Surprisingly, there are. First, I think, would be a strong conviction about and a passion for their company and their products. You have to believe. Right? And I think both exhibited that. Second would be a belief in the importance of innovation and being market leaders. You have to stay ahead. Third would be creating a sense of urgency in all that you do and in your company. Let me give you an example involving our college. In 2005, Mary Beth Mars and I conceptualized a leadership-focused program for high-ability undergraduates. 
How many alumni of the COP are here tonight? Well, we're students. We've got Ben and Katie, I know they're okay, we've got some, it's a wonderful program. Well, as with much of what a college does, Chris can confirm this, we needed a substantial donation to supplement state, state funding to make this proposal a reality. Thankfully, in spring 2006, Harry agreed to fund the program startup. He then said, Mary Beth, you'll have this program running in the fall, right? And that's how you create urgency. <laughs> and to Mary Beth's credit, she accepted the challenge, and indeed, it was running in fall 2006. So thank you, Mary Beth. I was going to extend the list of similarities between Musk and Harry, but then remembered that Harry and his wife named the daughter who's here this evening, Sharon, whereas Elon named one of his sons, listen, X-A-E-A -A hyphen 12 in Roman numerals. So Sharon, you got off very well, <laughs> okay? All right, next, why Churchill? Well, two Sundays ago, Pam and I went to the Churchill Museum in Fulton, so his life is fresh in my mind. If you haven't been there, I sound like a travel writer now. If you haven't been there, it's a must visit. It really is. You may know that in order to accelerate his career, Churchill chose to go far away from England, specifically to India and Africa, to be a soldier and a war correspondent. You may have known that, but did you know that Harry, at age 17, went far away to the Montana-Idaho border to serve as a forest fire lookout, age 17. For almost all of that summer, he was alone in a lookout station high off the ground. Harry told me, this won't surprise you, that he used some of that time to contemplate his future and how he should proceed. Maybe he had conversations with himself because he didn't see many people during that two months. So are there similarities between Churchill and Harry as a leader? Again, I would say yes. First, both were willing to take risks. Harry as a forest fire look at, at such a young age, and then as appropriate throughout his business career. And you know about Churchill and the risks he took. Second, like Churchill, Harry was a man with a plan. I can tell you in all of my interactions with Harry, he was never unprepared. He had the plan, okay? Third, both experienced failure. Fortunately, Harry only occasionally in business, and Churchill, as you know, very often, uh, getting fired from positions, getting voted out of office. All right. But let me tell you about a failure that I shared with Harry about 25 years ago, when the then governor, remains unnamed, uh, chose to not put funding for a new business school building into the next state budget. We were devastated. Did Harry, and I should add, other members of the advisory board, because some of the people like Bill Lennonbringer are here tonight, did they just say, it was a good try, we give up? No. Uh, although Harry and the governor at that time did not share the same political views, and that's an understatement, uh, Harry was still able to secure a face-to-face -face meeting between himself, three business school alumni, myself, the governor, and the governor's chief of staff. Well, you know the outcome. Remember Harry began his career in sales? He had very good sales skills. It took us a couple years, but we got the governor's attention and he committed to it. By the way, an irony is that Cornell Hall is located adjacent to the quadrangle that was subsequently named in honor of that governor. So there they are, all right? Finally, why Alice Walden? I was reminded of her when Pam and I were in Bentonville Bentonville, Arkansas, two weeks ago. As you know, Alice is one of four children of Sam and Helen Walton. 
You may think of his biggest accomplishment being the founder of Walmart, headquarters in Bentonville. We like to think it was that he was a graduate of Mizzou's business school. All right? Well, Alice staffed the popcorn stand at the first Walmart store, if I recall the history correctly. I know she worked for Walmart as a buyer, established an investment banking firm, and eventually, because of Walmart and her own business interests, became very, very wealthy. She could then lead the good life, indeed, the very good life. But instead, Alice devoted herself to philanthropy. Specifically, she decided to bring great art to Northwest Arkansas and the surrounding area. Alice founded, and through the Walton Family Foundation, funded the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville. It's truly incredible, another must visit for you if you haven't been there. Are there similarities between Alice and Harry? Definitely, yes. First, having met with Alice several times, I knew that she, like Harry, did not feel the need to speak often, but when either did, people listened. On our first visit to Crystal Bridges, uh, Alice came walking in unaccompanied, sat down at a table in the open space restaurant with about 15 to 20 very energetic, very talkative young people, average age under 30. As soon as she started speaking, everyone at the table was quiet and the group listened attentively. Turning to Harry, at one or two points during every meeting of the college's advisory board, Harry would say, Bruce, can I speak for a moment? I didn't last 20 years as dean by saying, no, we've got an agenda to follow. So I said, of course. And other energetic members of the advisory board quieted down and listened attentively to Harry and seldom, if ever, disagreed. Remember what I said? Harry always had a plan. And he had documentation for it. At perhaps the second meeting of the advisory board, 1991, the need for better facilities for the business school was discussed extensively. Uh, finally, Harry said something along the lines of, well, fellow board members, we could renovate Middle Bush Hall. That would improve some things. Or, better yet, we could maybe add an addition out there in that open space behind the building. Or, we could commit to a new state-of-the-art building. You know what happened. That set the course for the college for the next 10 years. Like Chris said, I'm biased, but I still think Cornell Hall looks pretty darn good after 20 years. It's pretty amazing. So, okay. so second, with regards to similarities between Alice and Harry, both used their wealth to benefit many, many people. Uh, I'll mention one, one more example. Both of their lists of philanthropic interests are long and varied, but I'll just mention one more for each. For Alice, I'll mention that last year, she founded an independent, nonprofit medical school in Bentonville. That's pretty amazing. For Harry, I'll highlight the Harry M. Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex, which will have its grand opening next month in Joplin, Missouri. I've seen the building, haven't been in it yet, it will be soon, but I will tell you that it will be the finest such venue in a city the size of Joplin anywhere in the United States. Remember my travel guidelines? That will be another must visit for you, okay? So to wrap up, as I see it, and I'm very, very biased, I think I'm pretty objective too. If you combine the best leadership qualities and values of, as disparate as they are, Elon Musk and Winston Churchill, Alice Walton, many other leaders, past and present, here, not here, you have Harry Cornell. Finally, I would point to this sculpture. It was commissioned by Harry. It's 
It's called Partners in Progress. I brought it from our home because I thought it was, Harry, it's really part of Harry's story. Partners in Progress, think of what that says about him as a leader and his relationship with our university and the business school. Aren't we all fortunate that more than 30 years ago, he decided to become not just a partner, but also a steadfast and generous leader in accelerating the college's progress? Indeed, we are. We're very fortunate. Well, before I get more emotional, I'm going to say thank you for listening to me talk about Harry Cornell, our college's benefactor, a wonderful, wonderful gentleman, Pam's and my dear friend, and a truly great leader. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Mary Beth Mars, and it has been my true honor to have served as the director of the Cornell Leadership Program since its inception in 2006. But right now, I'd like to introduce Lindsay Durbin Mullinger, who is a member of the inaugural class of the Cornell Leadership Program, and she graduated in 2010. Upon graduation, she embarked on a career at Procter & Gamble and then to Duracell, and most recently, while raising four little girls under the age of five, she, in 2020, launched a Petite Keep, which is a startup e-commerce keepsake traditions company. So we're very proud of her, and she's going to come and share some thoughts about CLP. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Mary Beth, for the kind welcome. I am so grateful and honored to be here this evening speaking to all of you about a program that made an incredible impact on my life. The Cornell Leadership Program truly was a reason I chose to attend Mizzou. It influenced the reason that I, I left the Midwest after college graduation. And most importantly, it set me up with tools to succeed on any career path I chose post-Mizzou. This core life experience would not have existed without the extreme generosity of Mr. Cornell. His passion for and dedication to educational experiences enabled myself and many others access to an elevated boutique program at the Trulas College of Business, one that was transformational on our futures. When I reflect back on my experience at the Cornell Leadership Program, excellence, exposure, and energy certainly defined my experience. Excellence is truly what drew me into the program. Coming from a family full of tigers, I was not convinced that Columbia, Missouri was where my story should be written. However, my mom, a tiger herself, and she's actually here this evening, sitting over there, um, wanted to make sure that I explored everything that Mizzou had to offer. So she brought me into Mary Beth Mars' office in spring of 2006, and within one hour, Mary Beth had convinced me that Mizzou was indeed the place for me. See, at the time, she was planning the curriculum for the inaugural year of the Cornell Leadership Program. There would be executive luncheons, there would be corporate visits across the country, there would be case study-driven coursework, and most importantly, it would be tailored to the top 2% of students. I was hooked. Not only did the program demand excellence for admittance, but it infused the theme throughout our four years. And when you're surrounded by type A-driven personalities, you're motivated to be the same. Next was exposure. I'm a firm believer that you can only dream what you can visualize. As a child who grew up in a hardworking Midwestern family, I had the right work ethic and grit to succeed. But I had never been to New York City, I had never been exposed to hedge funds in the world of finance, and quite honestly, it never even populated in my mind as an option for a career path. In my third year of the program, I found myself in New York City for the very first time because of the Cornell Leadership Program. I was exposed to industries and conversations that influenced my career trajectory, and this was all because of the generosity of Mr. Cornell. Finally, the Cornell Leadership Program infused an energy in our cohort, an energy of curiosity, an energy of knowledge, and an energy to experience new things. If you know Mary Beth Mars, you know that she has an innate passion and vibrancy that is palpable. 
She led our CLP class and she lit a fire in each one of us to go out and do better, whether that was in marketing, in finance, in New York, or Texas. We graduated the CLP program with an insatiable energy for wanting to succeed, however we defined that. As I reflect back on my time in the Cornell Leadership Program and the core life experiences it provided, I honestly am in awe at the experiences that Mr. Cornell's kindness put into motion. I recently read a poem by Rupi Kaur that sums up Mr. Cornell's generosity. Our work should equip the next generation to outdo us in every field. This is the legacy we'll leave behind. Thank you. I'm really not going to drink while I talk. <laughs> so, you know, I had the good fortune to know Harry since about 2005, and over the years, I'm really proud to say that he became a dear friend and mentor to me. Few people in this world can say they left a legacy, but Harry did. Yesterday, we honored that legacy as a group of current students, alumni, family members, and others gathered as we dedicated a tree outside of Cornell Hall in his memory. It was a beautiful day and an even more beautiful way for our CLP alumni to, to establish a symbol and a reminder for all that Harry had done for the Cornell Leadership Program. As Bruce mentioned back in early 2006, Harry committed to helping us build a program that would be the reason why the best and brightest students in Missouri would want to stay in Missouri. And these students since then have had the opportunity, much with the help of many alumni in this room, to travel to locations such as New York City, Dallas, Denver, Cuba, Panama, to learn about business firsthand from CEO, CEOs and other leaders across a range of industries. In fact, just last week we were in New York City and we visited with executives from 11 different industries. We walked the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Students job shattered at various firms on Wall Street. And then we got to take in a Broadway show. You know, and as hard as we can try as faculty in the classroom to kind of replicate that business world, you just can't do that. There's some things we can't do in the classroom. And this is where CLP and other programs come into play. Our students learn, that CL learn from CLP alumni and other True Last alumni about how do you raise $20 billion for a new fund when you're the principal for investor relations at a private equity firm? They learned how a hedge firm values a company when making acquisition decisions and what it takes to make it on Wall Street as a young professional. We also talked with alumni about the challenges of starting up a new company and surviving a pandemic along the way. And most importantly, our students learned the value of the True Last family. They learned that whenever we gather in one place in New York City, and they gathered and learned and had the excitement of all this alumni and all this energy in one room together and in one space, it was very special, and many thanks to the Aslan family for making that happen. But as wonderful as New York City and these other trips are, my favorite trip always is to Legan and Platt's headquarters, and I want to tell you why. So this is a trip where students have the opportunity to hear firsthand from CEOs or former CEOs like Dave Hafner and Carl Glassman and CFO Matt Flanagan about Harry and about how Harry had impacted them personally, how he had mentored them, how his leadership had inspired them, and that they were better leaders because of Harry. This is what is so important to me in my opinion because students need to know what kind of leader Harry was and the impact he had on others and to know we had just as high expectations for them as well. And again, experiences such as these simply wouldn't be possible without Harry's vision. So you know, Bruce talked about that Harry was always prepared. He always had a plan. He always wanted the data. So I'm going to share a little data with you. Over 500 students impacted, now living in 33 states and five countries. It used to be six until the carriers moved back. <laughs> Eight married CLP couples. My daughter tells me that's a little strange, but I always like to share that. Who now have six CLP babies. Yes, they will be legacy admits to the CLP. We've had 14 trips to New York City, and I've lost no one on a subway yet. We've had over 20 in-state corporate trips, soon to be eight trips to Legan and Platt. 
We've had seven service trips to locations such as Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and other places. And also, by the way, if you ever want to know how to build a portable chicken coop, my students can help you with that. We've also traveled and engaged with business leaders in Denver, Dallas 11 times, been to Cuba twice, Chile, and Ireland as well. And the statistic that scares me the most is how many hours I have spent on a charter bus driving to these locations. But we also had a lot of fun along the way. We had some really priceless non-business memories created. How many of you can say you've ever slid, slid down the side of an active volcano? Yeah, don't tell risk management about that one. <laughs> but being stranded in Tennessee in a snowstorm, we got stuck in an elevator in Denver for 30 minutes, and then we also had a chance to learn great lessons from people such as Jamie Dimon and Pete Coors, and of course, Harry himself. But what's really remarkable is that Harry's legacy lives on through all students who grace the halls of Cornell Hall. These students carry on the vision that Harry set for the college, that we needed to grow our own leaders in Missouri by keeping the best and brightest in Missouri to attend the True Last College of Business, to develop strong business leaders from Missouri for the benefit of Missouri by building businesses in Missouri. Leaders like Lindsey Mullinger, whom you heard from earlier. Leaders like Kelsey Meyer Raymond, who's grown a company here locally into a national powerhouse and is now investing in other startups to grow jobs in Missouri. Katie and Ben Carrier, who left corporate America to take over, eventually, an accounting practice in central Missouri. And leaders like Trish Zimmer-Ferguson, who was a student in college, she spoke at the dedication of Cornell Hall, and she understood even at that point the impact that Cornell Hall and the college could have on her. And these students and alumni carry with them the example that Harry set for them for being a leader of integrity, for doing the right thing, always for giving back and lending a hand to others, trying to follow in their footsteps. And I know Harry is proud of all of his students that he helped create these extraordinary opportunities for within the halls of Cornell Hall. So back in 2015, we celebrated the endowment gift from Harry. And at that event, he gave each student one of these. And on it, it says, the joy of a gift is in its giving. And I couldn't agree more, and I'm sure those of you who have so generously donated to the True Last College of Business would agree as well. Now, now comes the drink. Now I would like to ask you to join me in a toast to Harry. When I would visit Harry, he would always say, Now, Mary Beth, I want you to come down about three or 4 o'clock in the afternoon for a little gin and tonic time. That was his favorite time of day, or one of his favorite times of day. So I ask you to raise your glass a little bit higher if you're enjoying his favorite drink, a gin and tonic, which is what I have, to Harry's family. Thank you for sharing your daddy. Thank you for sharing your father-in-law with us. May we be good stewards of the trust that Harry placed in us to carry out his legacy and live by his example. May we make Harry proud. To Harry. Thank you, All right. Thank you very much. Bruce, Lindsay, and Mary Beth, thank you for your heartfelt words about Harry's legacy. New members, welcome to the Davenport Society. You joined an impressive and supportive group of True Lask alumni and friends. We hope you'll take a moment to look at the names of all the new and advancing members in your program. If you see someone you know, please take a moment to thank them for their support, which is so important and meaningful to the college that we all love. Please join me in extending a special thank you to the True Last staff who have planned this evening's event. We absolutely have the best staff on campus, and that's absolutely true. And we couldn't host this event without them. We look forward to seeing each of you next year at this event uh, to learn what you've been doing and to share updates on the college. And thank you again for joining us and for your generosity, which literally changes the lives of our students every day and in every way. This brings us to the end of our program. We tried to keep it short and sweet, which coincidentally is my nickname around the college.
Have a great homecoming weekend. Thank you.